If one travels the lengths of the old world, they will occasionally find large, ornately carved boulders in seemingly random locations. Some might be isolated in the wilderness, with nothing resembling civilization within hundreds of miles, while others jut from the earth near roads and towns. They are not evenly distributed, and some regions have far more of these mysterious rocks than others. A determined traveler can find nearly 500 of them in Blackfire Pass alone, while the halfling town of Midgewater bears only one. The magic emanating from these boulders is apparent even to novice wizards, with runes of courage and protection etched in silver across their surface. These are oath stones, proud monuments of dwarf stubbornness and tenacity, marking important battles in the history of the stout folk. The concept of the Oath Stone was first invented during the War of Vengeance. King Iron Handson of Kerak Varn was leading his throng back to their hold following the sixth unsuccessful siege of Toralesi when an elf army ambushed the Dawi in Brindale Vale. Though they fought valiantly, the dwarf rearguard was almost overwhelmed, and an orderly retreat was in danger of becoming a disastrous rout. Knowing the bulk of his soldiers would be slain or captured in such an event, King Iron Hansen and his bodyguard rushed to the thick of the fighting. The king made his stand upon a boulder-strewn ridge at the mouth of the valley. Taking one of these rocks and carving his personal rune into it with his enchanted axe, Iron Hansen climbed upon it and swore a solemn oath before the dwarfs and elves alike. The king recited his lineage before vowing to never take a step back from this stone, even in death. If he did fall in this battle, Iron Hansen swore, he would be buried beneath it rather than in the hold of his ancestors. Upon hearing this, the dwarf rearguard fought with renewed fury. While the king and his bodyguard did eventually fall before the elven onslaught, they did manage to buy the rest of Karagvarn's army enough time to escape the Elgi. The elves were impressed by Iron Hansen's tenacity, and let their dwarf prisoners bury their fallen king under the boulder. Thus was the first oath stone created. Word of King Iron Hansen's sacrifice spread far and wide across the Keres Angkor. It rekindled the thirst for battle within the war weary dwarfs, and many commissioned their own oath stones. Even the High King at the time, Gotrek Starbreaker, had his runesmiths create an oath stone for him to make truly desperate stands upon. The tradition has stayed alive and well in the centuries since and King Iron Hansen's Oathstone in Brindale Vale has become a holy site of sorts for the Dawi. Every year, a few dwarfs make the dangerous pilgrimage to visit the first Oathstone in recognition of Iron Hansen's brave example. An Oathstone is more than just a physical object. It's a promise to never take a step back in the face of insurmountable odds. When confronted by a threat that might break the Dawi lines, a dwarf lord or thane will lay down a large, flat rock with their personal rune scribed upon it. Standing upon this oath stone, they swear to never retreat from this point in the battlefield and face all challengers that dare confront them, like King Iron Hansen of old. Reinvigorated by the solemnness of this oath, the dwarf surrounding the lord will fight with renewed fury in all directions. This passionate response is supported by the magic of the oath stone, which empowers the courage and resolve of the dwarfs around it. Dawi fighting alongside a lord on an oath stone will almost never retreat in the face of overwhelming force, so loath are they to leave their valiant leader behind. Should a dwarf on an oath stone die in battle, just like King Iron Hansen, their bodies will be buried beneath the boulder. They cannot be interred within their hold's tombs, as there is no way they can return home with their honor intact in the face of such a defeat. In these cases, the oath stone will act as their tombstone marking the final resting place of a great dwarfish hero. While this may seem like an invitation to necromancers, vampires, and tomb robbers to disturb the dead dwarf, this is not the case. To protect against such meddling, oath stones have runes of grave protection carved into their surface. So long as the magically treated rock is intact, no foul magics can disturb the fallen lord or thane. In Total War Warhammer, only Belagar Ironhammer has an oath stone. It gives charge defense against all, and a sizable melee defense boost in a large aura, making surrounding units very resilient for nearly half a minute. This is a pretty good representation of what an oath stone does in the lore, instilling those surrounding the lord with the desperate passion needed for a last stand. Still, while Belagard is famous for possessing an oath stone made from part of an ancestor's tomb, 
he's not the only dwarf to use one in lore, giving a similar, if less powerful, ability to a generic dwarf lord might make them more useful in battles. I mean, hell, if you want to give Belagar a better version of the Oathstone and then give the lords his current version, that would be good too. It's not like these dwarf lords are necessarily in danger of being made OP with such a minor addition. Thanes could also benefit from such an ability, making them potentially useful for once, but I can understand not giving it to them, just to keep the dwarf lords a little more unique. With that, we've completed our overview of Oathstones. I really like them, as they're an excellent representation of the self-defeating stubbornness of the dwarfs. There's something so patently ridiculous and tenacious about not taking a single step back on the battlefield for any reason, even if it gives you a tactical advantage, that you just can't help but respect it. Or at least I can't. I can't speak for all of you. You might find it stupid, and rightfully so. If you're also a fan of Oathstones, though, you should tell me down in the comments down below. If you're more of the nonverbal type, you could also like the video instead. Either way, that's all that I have for us today. Until next time, this has been Sigmar's Chosen, signing off for now.